All right. This is the second take. I already did, already did one take of this, and uh, I noticed the microphone wasn't being picking up my sound very well or my voice. So let's try again. I'm standing in Martin Place. It's an absolutely stunning day in Sydney today. It's going to get up to 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see the War Memorial behind me. That would have been pretty busy last week for Anzac Day. Before I start, I just have a quick shout out to subscriber Jen K. Thanks very much for shouting me those nectars. Uh, the nectars are on you today. Three nectars in all. Much appreciated. But what I'm doing in the city today is I've uh, got myself a list here. That list just there, it's a list of laneways in Sydney. Now, a lot of them are historic that the uh, Sydney City Council put out, I think, in 2015. And in all, there's 22 lanes mentioned. We're going to get around to each of them today. Some of them you've seen before, like Angel Place and... Uh, Abercrombie Lane, but hopefully we'll see some new ones as well. So let's get stuck into them. See you soon. All right, we're coming up to the first location, number one out of 22, and it's Phillip Lane. We're just stepping out of a place called Aurora Place. I think it's underneath the ABN Ambro building or what used to be the ABN Ambro building. And what's significant about this laneway is it dates all the way back to 1840 and it's the last surviving laneway that was built to service the houses or the homes that were dotted along Macquarie Street which is behind us that way Phillips Street this way So here's Philip Lane. What remains of Philip Lane anyway? Got a lot of buildings that are imposing over it now. I don't think I've ever walked down this laneway, so I have no idea where it where it leads. Probably lead out onto Macquarie Street, I suppose. Is that it? old ABN Ambro building that I was talking about. Let's film up the top. We lose the reflection after a while into the sky. I didn't see any street street sign that mentioned Philip Lane, but you can see there, this business has got Philip Lane mentioned on it. Philip Lane dry cleaning. Oh, here we go, there is a street sign. There it is, there's the street sign for Philip Lane. It's a pretty old building in front of us there. There's Macquarie Street up there. So another look up Phillip Lane. And then I think we'll creep down this little tunnel here and get over to the next location. There we go, we come out onto Phillips Street and we've got the New York Museum of Sydney across the road. There'll be a few tourists in there, no doubt. So let's switch off here and we'll come get over to the next location. Okay, location number two, Custom House Lane. 
And this whole building here with made of sandstone is the Hinchcliffe's wool house or wool store. And this harks back to the 1860s when Circular Quay was the centre of international shipping for Australia. You can see the old pulley system to bring the bales of wool up up the top of the building. So yeah, this is only a little laneway. I don't think I've ever been through this one either. And then location number three is right nearby. This Loftus Lane. This one's got a few businesses in it. I think it's got a club in it called the Gallipoli Club as well. It takes so much time. Cheeky little cafe over there. One over here, or oh, that's probably the same one. Yeah. Restaurant bar over here called Kobo. A health food store called Side Room. There's a few little arcades around here off Loftus Lane as well. Now you can see that trail up there in the sky. Must have been a sky rider come past. Here's the start of Loftus Lane up here. And it extends down there. That's a beautiful spot. Lots of delightful cafes and restaurants in there. All right, let's see how uh, how far spot number four, location number four, is away. Test, test, test. Oh, not far to go as we exit Loftus Lane, which actually dog dog legged around as well. This is the next location over here, number four. Macquarie Place. There's the street sign over there. Can you see it? So that used to be a that yeah that used to be a through street. So you used to be able to drive through there, but uh, not anymore. I'm not going to go too far down there because there's just heaps of people boozing down Macquarie Place. There's a few diff actually there's a few historical things here in Macquarie Place. So this used to be through, the through street right, so you used to be able to drive through here. Join up with Bridge Street and Pitt Street over there. Somewhere there, that's a pretty old little thing there, but there was supposed to, supposedly a drinking fountain somewhere around here. What they called the Victorian drinking fountain, but I can't see it. This obelisk has been here for quite a while, and I don't know whether you can see, I'm not going to walk much further. I'll just quickly walk on this grass here. But apparently this dome here, which you can see in the corner, just there, that used to be a, a men's restroom. How would it go down in there and sort your business out? So that's location number four, Macquarie Place. Let's get off to uh, number five now. All right, we just left Macquarie Place back there and we're in the next location which is location 5 which is Reby Place and this is named after a Mary Reby who was a convict convicted of stealing a horse but she later became a pretty wealthy widow and uh, this side here became the first uh, bank of New South Wales so Mary Reby she dominated. 
Here we are at location six. We're just about to walk into Bulletin Place. This was the home of the uh, Bulletin newspaper magazine back in the 1800s. And I'm just reading, apparently, if you would have come back down this lane in the day, you would have seen famous people like Henry Lawson uh, frequenting this laneway. Now it's got a bunch of bars and restaurants. And I was reading as well, it used to have some uh, jazz clubs down here as well, back in the old days. As we come up to this archway up here, this is Macquarie Place again. So all these laneways are pretty close together. So come and check them out when you come to Sydney. All right, here we are at location number seven, Underwood Street. Named after a James Underwood who built Sydney's first shipyard here in the 1700s, 1798 I think it was. So there's a little laneway. Oh look, they've got a few historical placards on the wall here. I was just reading, apparently the waterfront used to extend into here. That's why the shipyard was here. And they mention, you know, if you look at it today, it's quite a distance to the water from this spot. bit of construction around here which is annoying We don't have far to go to the next location, location 8, which is Dally Street, because it was the, uh, the street or laneway that we just came out of up there where that truck's about to turn. Apologies, I'm wrangle wrangling with my guide here. So this Delhi Street up here, which is out the back of the Sydney Stock Exchange, was named after a Victor Delhi, a politician. There's the exchange, the back of the exchange just there. And what's um, what's notable about this, apart from it being named after that politician, was it's changed names a few times. It used to be at one stage called uh, Queen's Place. And now that I think about it, now that I look at that street sign, Dally, Dally Street, and see those old red bricks there, that must be the old Dally Street Telshire telephone exchange, I'd say, by the looks of it. So let's have a look at the guidebook and see where the next location is. Oh, the next one's easy, Abercrombie Lane. Been there before. All right, just passing by the establishment. I can smell the beer in there. And here we are, getting down Abercrombie Lane. Which we've been down before. 
in previous vids but we'll go down again for me this is most famous for being the spot where pretty much underneath our feet is um oh there's that grumpy baker in there Yeah, for me, what it's um, famous for most is being the spot where Sydney's first drinking supply was located, which later became known as the Tank Stream. Once the convicts built some holding tanks for the water. Pretty narrow laneway, this one. Pretty cool. There's a lot of backdoor entrances into bars and restaurants along here it's one of the back door entrances here into Palmer and Co Then we come out into Tank Stream Way. Been here before. You'll remember I picked up a takeaway coffee at this um, this Marlowe's Way up here. Got run over by that truck. Pretty busy afternoon. There's people walking around looking for booze and trucks delivering goods into various establishments. Here's the next location, we just walked past it, Bridge Lane. This is out the back of the establishment as well, and also a famous Chinese restaurant called Mr Wong's, which we'll walk past in a moment. reading on the guide this was the site of Sydney's first lumber yards bridge lane it's a pretty old building that the establishment and, and Mr Wong's restaurants in look there's a few lunchtime punters coming out now bellies full of delights The, um, there's the entrance there, you can still see some lunch crowd in there now and there through that window and also through this window here if you ever come to Sydney recommend you get into Mr Wong's it's a delicious menu they've got in there Now Bridge Lane dog legs around into this delightful archway takes you back onto Bridge Street. So let's get over to the next location now. Now we're walking past the establishment once again um, up George Street because we're going to pick up Bond Street which is the next location.
Here it is, here's Bond Street. I've been down this one before as well. This one's become a bit of a no-go zone, this first part for cars. But um, what's significant about this was this really old street with a lot of old buildings that got demolished when Australia Square, which is this building here, which used to be called the Summit. Um, revolving restaurant up the top. Yeah, Bond Street um, became a victim because most of it got pulled down the construction of this building. So let's get over to the next location. We might sneak through Australia. Oh, no, we won't because then pick up all the noisy drinkers. Let's go down to Pitt Street and then into Curtin Place, which is the next cheeky Sydney laneway that we've got to visit. As we come up out the back of um, Australia Square, we hit uh, Curtin Place, named after Prime Minister John Curtin. And at one stage, somewhere around here, there was another laneway called Robin Hood Place, but I think has disappeared under the Australia Square development here. Now I'm going to pause here and uh, in a in Curtin Place and uh, might go into the little boys' room in uh, Australia Square quickly, and then I will go off to the next laneway. I also changed the battery too, which is running out. Just about to cross over George Street, get over to the next location, which is Wynyard Lane. I've mentioned this before, but you see the, how they're blocked off the roads now. This is the bottom of Margaret Street. And they've got all the street furniture that you can sit in now. All up and down Short Street and different parts of the city. <laughs> this batch coffee shop's starting to close up their outdoor seating for the day. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is Winyard Lane here. I better just quickly check on the street corner up here. Yep, I was right. This is Winyard Lane here on the corner here where this is Batch Coffee Shop is. So this is interesting. This has got a building built over the laneway. It's a cool laneway, I like this one, especially given that there's that batch coffee store down the end. Get out onto George Street there too, look. Australiana mural over here with the magpies and uh, galahs featured. This little finch up there. May have even been a Karawong. I can never remember whether the uh, yellow eyes or the red eyes seem to determine whether it's a magpie or a Karawong. It's one of those two birds. It's either a Karawong or a magpie. Mm. 
Yeah, this would be one of my favourite lanes so far. And I may be being biased because of the coffee store on the end, but... It's a decent sized lane as well, Winyard Lane. Uh, um, I didn't mention what this is about, did I? Um, Winyard Lane around this area was the old military barracks in Sydney back in the ye old days. So there would have been the uh, there would have been red coats everywhere swarming around this area. Let's get off to the next location, which is York Lane. This is the next location, York Lane, which is Sydney's longest laneway. It gets split in two by um, Erskine Street down there. But what's good about this little street, it's, it's turned into one of those precincts where they've got the little hole in the wall bars that have popped up. And this is one here, I think it's just called York Lane, this one. Cheeky little bar with probably only a dozen people permitted in there. So it's a groovy spot to have a drink. This is another one over here. Um, what's this one called? Oh, this has got an entrance on the on York Street itself as well. It's called Next Door Pizza and Drinks. And this is this must be the takeaway part of their business here on the side, making the pizzas. I don't know whether it's still here, but there used to be right on the corner here. There used to be a strip club. Oh, look, there's one called the Velvet Underground. Used to be called something different. I think it was called the Governor's Pleasure. There's the uh, Occidental Hotel there. We'll keep walking down New York Lane to give the full length of it. Let's look down the other way that we just came down. I haven't had a chance to see much of the sky in Sydney today, but you can see, you can get a glimpse of the delightful blue sky through the gap in the buildings there. It's a sensational day. I wish I was sitting down having a few drinks like all these other people. I'm going to do this film for you. What I didn't mention before as well, as I walk down York Street, I'll turn the camera around. You can see I've got my bunnies hat on, my Rabbitohs hat. That's the rugby league team that I follow, have my whole life. They're playing the Brisbane Broncos tonight in Brisbane. Now normally when I wear the hat, I, I jinx them. So I hope I don't do this tonight so that's the end of your claim we come onto barrack street now and there's the rest of your claim down there so let's have a look at the list and see what we've got next again excuse the tilt on the camera while i look at the list Actually, we should put the camera down on one of these ledges while I while I do this, or, or maybe on these old street grates here. All right, what's the next one? Okay, next one is Palings Lane and Ash Street. I think I have to cross over York Street to get to these ones.
and across over York Street and George Street. So let's get moving, switch off the camera here, switch it back on when I get to Ash Street. All right, we're just stepping off George Street onto Palings Lane. This is what remains of Palings Lane. It's become a collection of restaurants, cafes and bars now, this little laneway. There's a little bottle shop there. There's a nightclub up above us as well called the Ivy. This cheeky little bar here, look at that. That's called Bar Topper. Strange place to have a florist, but there you go. And now we're going to turn into Ash Street. Uh, Palings Lane. There used to be a, um, uh, back in Victor uh, the old days, there used to be a, an entrepreneur that started up a, a piano business above here, selling pianos, importing pianos. I don't know. So we come into Ash Street. Um, so similar location as well. So the people are eating in here at Felix. Wait, get, get, wait till they get past all those diners to say that um, this street's famous for being, or infamous, for being the headquarters of the Australian Liberal Party political party for a long, long time. I don't know whether it still is. And then, of course, we're going to come into the next location, which is Angel Place, and I've done this plenty of times before. You know, film the, the bird cages up here. Who are getting their Instagram shots there now, look. Just face the camera up as I walk through here. So that's Angel Place and a dog dog legs around here. There's more restaurants and bars down here. Cheeky, uh, cheeky Angel Place hotel there on the corner. No, I don't actually know what Angel Place is famous for, so I'm going to have to check the guy. Again, we might put the camera down while I do this. This one's famous for a number of different buildings, this Angel Place, but one of them was designed by an American immigrant by the name of Eyesight's Paul. I think it's Edward Ratt, or Ratt, who introduced, oh, I can't even read it, my eyesight's too poor. So what's the next location? So that's Angel Place. So now we've got it. We're getting there now. We're getting up to 19 and 20. And then it's only 21, 22 and we're done. And then I can finally have a nectar. Uh, next, 19 to 20 is Penfold Place and Hosking Place. So we actually missed one. This is where this van's parked here. 
that little bit there which I called the dog leg of Angel Place, that's Penfold's place. And now we're going to go over to Hosking's place across the road. Across Pitt Street. And what Hosking Place and Penfolds Place is uh, famous for is this is where um, W.C. Penfolds, who later became a stationery, uh, was first a printer. So the first to bring the printing press out to Australia. Now this is Hosking's Place in here apparently. I think they I think there used to be a used to be at WC Penfolds around here the stationery shop. Some of these buildings have seen better days. So yeah, that's that's Hosking Place. Not really exciting that one. Some dog leg up here as well. Oh no, this is Penfold Place here. So I was wrong. That's Penfold Place. So this this must be Hosking Lane here. So I stuffed that up. As you can see, all these old laneways are like they are truly forgotten, most of them. Yeah, this is definitely Hosking Place, I think. Yeah, there's a sign for Hosking's Place. All right, let's put the camera on this ledge up here and then see where the next location is. Oh, actually, no, we'll put it on that ledge over there. Now, apparently now we're going to move on to number one Martin Place. Which is the GPO building. Yo! GPO building. I might actually film this one from a distance because I have filmed it before. And oh no, we might as well go down there because the last location is not far from the GPO building. I don't know what time it is. I haven't looked at my watch for a while, but. Um, well, when I say watch, I haven't looked at my phone. I don't, don't not wearing a watch today. But it looks like it's definitely starting to get later. Some of the punters are starting to head home early, being a Friday. There's a delightful GPO building.
So basically what I was going to say as we look at the uh, GPO building over there was uh, it housed one of those tanks when, we, when I was talking about the tank stream earlier when I was at Abercrombie Lane. So this side held one of the tanks for the uh, tank stream as well, for Sydney's first water supply. So I've been in that GPO building a couple of times before so I won't bother. Instead we'll head down Pitt Street here and go to the last location. And this one's, this one's uh, a good one. This one as a tourist or a local, you probably walk past all the time. And don't even notice. So here, just across the road to the entrance to the uh, Fullerton Hotel at number one Martin Place, this is Row, Row Street. This used to be a lot bigger, it used to extend all the way up to um, Castle Ray Street on the other side. Here's the sign for Row Street. Now until I looked at this guide, I'd never noticed that street sign before because I've been up this Row Street millions of times. I've worked in a couple of the buildings around here. The reason why the street got cut off um, from the old days was because it, uh, this MLC centre, this massive MLC centre building got built and that cut the, uh, that cut the street in half. I hope you can see the tower, I hope it's not blurring out in the sky. But this shop just here, I used to come to this all the time. This used to be a, uh, a little Vienna sandwich shop. You can still see the kitchen in the back there. It's one of those places that made the massive sandwiches. Here they've got some photos of what it used to look like back in the day. Definitely one of my favourites, Rose Street. Here's the building that we just passed through before. Head up Rose Street and we we're about standing about, we're standing about there now. Now what was famous about this street was they, they called it a real bohemian street of, of Sydney. You used to come here to get your uh, your ladies fashion and jewelry and all sorts of different things but mostly mostly clothing I think. Cheeky little coffee lounge on the corner here. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's number 22. I think that's it. That's Rose Street. Let me just check the guide quickly. Yeah, that's it. Number 22 Rose Street. So yeah, as we walk past these murals again of the, or photos of the old days of, of Rose Street, we'll focus on this guy here that's looking into the camera. Well, thank you for taking a skirt around the lane. Before I got cut off there, thanks for taking a skirt around the streets of Sydney, or the laneways of Sydney with HW. See you in the next vid. Like, comment, subscribe. The video is over.
it's still out for. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool.